For six months, this man lay in a waking coma. For eight months more, he could not speak at all. At 19, just after this family wedding, Hakan Karaduman was in a car crash that almost ended his life. The doctors said, this one won't live. I kept on crying. They said, he won't live. He's dead. It's better that his mother forgets him. But his mother refused to give up on him. She managed to get him referred to the Schmieder Clinic in southern Germany, where Professor Schoenler has pioneered new techniques to bring coma patients back to life. A basic principle, a basic philosophy, is the principle of hope. If we had no hope of a positive prognosis, nothing would come of these patients. It would be a self-fulfilling prophecy. Haken spent three years at the clinic. Ten years ago, I was in this room, but I can't remember anything about it, unfortunately. Thanks be to God I got my son. Not altogether healthy, not like before, but better. Altogether well, I will never be. I know that. Thank God he's healthy, my son. Ah, ganz knapp. Professor Schoenler claims an 80 to 85 percent success rate in bringing people back from a vegetative state. Patients often written off by colleagues in acute medicine. <laughs> With Hakan, the doctors who handled him at first in the acute clinic were clearly of the opinion that nothing would become of him. Often the parents, the mother, then say they don't want to give the organs. They want their son or daughter to continue to live. Hakan came to us in a very early stage, and then he slowly developed. Rainer Dreher had a motorbike accident and has been in a vegetative state for six or seven months. Eyes open, conscious, but hard to reach. <sighs> Professor Schoenler's initial diagnosis is made by measuring the electrical activity of the brain. The first step when Rainer arrived was to find out what he could perceive. Magnetic resonance imaging scans were done to see what areas of the brain were injured, and electrophysical tests, EEGs, to register brain waves. Quietly now. It's not bad what we're doing. It doesn't hurt at all. Quietly. It's very important to find when they are more awake, more present, their brain more ready for activity, because then we have a window for therapeutic intervention. The clinic works to re-establish a day-night rhythm. In the day, they use every means possible to stimulate the patients continuing to probe for signs of consciousness. Incorrect sentences are played back to the patients. If the patient registers a mistake, his brain responds with electrical activity. If so, it indicates there is a window of consciousness in the patient's brain. Where there's a will, there's a leader. Too many cooks spoil the Nothing. Reiner is reacting to sentences where the last word doesn't fit. This response to language gives the doctors hope that he may come out of his vegetative state. Intensive daily physiotherapy also helps in the long process of reawakening. Physical activity is seen as a way of jump-starting the brain. Patients are lifted onto their feet and help to use their limbs. Physiotherapy has the purpose not only to keep the periphery, the joints and muscles fit, so that they don't seize up, but with patients still in a coma, we will lift them up onto their legs. Then all the reflexes spring into action again. It's like when we stretch and yawn. It gives us a hold in the so-called reticular system, the waking center which activates sleep in the brainstem, deep in the brain. Also seen as crucial to recovery is the presence of relations. I sometimes compare it to a broken mirror. All around the patient, 
are broken pieces of the world. The doctors, the therapists, the nurses around are all strangers. Whereas the family existed before, he knows what they look like. From small pieces, he can reconstruct these people. Professor Schoenler is hopeful that within 18 months, Reiner should have permanent contact with the world. He'll probably still be in a wheelchair, but should be able to eat and to express his wishes. Still at an earlier stage is Michael Widmer, once a keen sailor, now in a deep coma following a car accident. His wife pays privately for him to have the combination of intensive therapies on offer here. So determined is she not to write him off. She watches him carefully for signs of consciousness. When he sleeps, not a very deep sleep like now, but on a different level, I think he has sometimes such a contented face, like a little smile. I think he has beautiful dreams. Do you also see eye movements? Then he is in fact dreaming, yes. Professor Schoenler concedes that not every coma patient is reachable. If they've tried every method for a year or more and got no reaction, the probability is the patient won't come back. But he is adamant that you have to try. If you only clinically test a patient in a vegetative state, you have no idea of their objective potential. That means that you must do these investigations. If you don't and you let the patient starve, you are practically killing someone who could have had the possibility of resuscitation. Is that right? He shrugs like that. It means, I don't know. Reiner's parents were told that their son would never come round from his coma and react again. That was a deep blow for us. But nevertheless, we never gave up hope. Hacken has had to give up the hope of returning to his previous job as a car mechanic. But he can speak three languages, enjoy his life, and ride his bike. I can't do that job anymore. But nevertheless, I'm very grateful that the Schmieder Clinic exists in Allensbach, because they brought me this far. They're very good.